get this done without more sirens going off, shall we? <laughs> Something's on fire, and I don't know how it could be because it's been raining like crazy for the last 12 hours. But anyway, we'll try this again. Hey everybody, it's that time again. It's time for Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. My name is Deborah, and I'm coming to you from here on my family farm in the foothills of the Arkansas Ozarks where I like to do all the crafts. I knit, I crochet, I sew, I quilt, I make baskets, I make jewelry, I do needlework. I'll try any craft once and twice if I like it. Uh, I am also a university professor where I have classes for physics majors and um, upper division classes on science literacy and astrophysics and meteorology and I teach general education classes as well and normally I am a docent for our planetarium and I do outreach activities um, for kids and also pertaining to minorities and women in STEM although right now things are kind of on hold in that area as you can imagine. Uh, and last but not least, I am a farmer. I am a third generation plus family farmer living here on this land where I raise grass-fed beef cattle. I ra raise horses. I have heritage poultry. <laughs> I have heritage poultry. Uh, I have show rabbits. And I have a retirement herd of miniature horses, miniature donkeys, donkeys, a miniature mule named Pumpkin who thinks she rules the roost. Princess Penny, the pot belly pig, the protector of the poultry. And as you can tell from my very sweet little co-host, Willie, here I am fur kid mom to 13 dogs, 8 indoor cats, and an undetermined number of outside barn cats. So if any or of all of that sounds interesting to you, we hope you'll join us as we go along here on our next episode, or not next, but current episode of Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. Okay, uh, I wanted to say welcome to everybody. Welcome back. If you're a returning viewer, I'm sure I'm glad you're back. And if you're a new subscriber, I hope you like something of what you see. Um, we have had, had a, a few new subscribers, uh, so hopefully you will enjoy this. Um, so, if you're looking for us on social media, you can find us as Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal on Ravelry. Uh, the YouTube, I have a farm Facebook page, which is the same as my YouTube channel name, which is Buckthorn Farms. And we have a Ravelry group for the podcast where you can find out all about our giveaways and our make-alongs and any contests. And we'll talk about those in just a little bit. You can also find me on Ravelry and on Instagram as Doc Firewoman. Uh, where I post pictures on Instagram about farming and about crafting and just whatever's going on. And I am also on Twitter as Doc Firewoman. But I will warn you, I am a science-believing, socially liberal Democrat. And Twitter is where I go to town <laughs> with all that stuff. <laughs> oh, especially right now. Dr. Fauci is my hero. Yay. <laughs> I need a shirt that says that. Next time, maybe I'll get one. Uh, but anyway, so um, so if that kind of stuff gives you heartburn, probably best for both of us if you don't follow me on Twitter. But you can follow me everywhere else, and I kind of keep things down to a dull roar. But if, you, if I see science idiocy being posted, I'm probably going to say something, especially right now, because there's some stuff going around right now that is just wrong <laughs> just wrong just not even any nice way to say it just wrong and i'm not gonna stand for that so anyway but that being aside ravelry is where you can find my group um we have several make-alongs going on right now um our current make-alongs include creature feature we have ended the first quarter i awarded those prizes i was a little bit late in getting those out and putting up the new thread uh, so I apologize for that. Uh, if you posted after April 1st in the old thread, you might want to go and go over and check out the new thread. Now, the new thread was going to be what's bugging you. But I have decided, given everything that's going on in the world, it's if it makes you happy, like the Sheryl Crow song, if it makes you happy, then you make it. And that's how we're going to do this. <laughs> We'll do what's bugging you another time, but we're going to do, if it makes you happy, 
that's what you make, but it has to be an amigurumi. That's my only rule. It has to be some kind of an amigurumi. It doesn't have to be a creature. It can be a piece of pizza for all I care, but if it makes you happy, then that's what you post, okay? All right. Um, okay, so next we have string along. String along is where we're using crochet thread or cotton thread of some type, whether we're using it to make doilies or table runners or snowflakes or uh, strengthening the heels and toes in our socks or using it as an accent piece or cross stitching or whatever, string along. Uh, bust a move stash down. This is in conjunction with some other stash downs that are going on. Um, with mine, it's got to, you've got to have owned the yarn by January one of before January one of this year, um, and before somebody opened the seal on the genie's bottle. <laughs> woo, this year's been a doozy um, so far. <laughs> so um, maybe it's just Y two K twenty years late. Maybe the minds couldn't tell time with their big fancy astrology clocks. It was really supposed to be 2020 instead of 2012. Who knows? But anyway, if you owned that pattern prior to this and you owned the pattern, or excuse me, if you owned the yarn prior to this, it counts. And if you owned a pattern that you used the yarn in prior to January 1 of this year, you get a double entry. So, um, yeah. So then we also have the science sprinkles make alongs, which is science related stuff. Um, you know, those are, those are a great place to enter because I do prize drawings monthly for those. And it's anything sciencey related. If you can make the case that it's sciencey related, you can get on over there and post, uh, and you can just learn some stuff. I try to write interesting posts up there for you. Uh, I already know what this one's going to be. The new scientist that's going to be featured is going to be, uh, Margaret Burbage, and if you don't know who she is, you'll have to read April's post to see. She's someone very near and dear to my heart in my particular field of research. Um, also, we have uh, How Do You Eat an Elephant? One bite at a time. How, how do you eat an elephant? That's where we're picking out a big project that we maybe have kind of languished or stalled on and working on it, trying to work on it daily. I am still working on my blanket as my elephant. I'm starting to feel some momentum building to get to the finish line on that. So let's hope that that continues. Um, then we have Kitter Getter Done because we have some of us have, some of us have problems buying kits for things and we keep buying kits, but we're trying to use them to, um, because if anything is, any, if, if we take anything away from this long, strange trip that we're all on right now, we need to learn that use the good china, use the stuff you've been hoarding, don't wait for a special occasion because every day that you wake up in this world and you're able to, you know, feed yourself and clothe yourself and be around those that you love, or at least on the phone, it's a special occasion. So let's celebrate life, shall we? And use our good stuff. Let's see. Is that everything? Yeah. Oh, and we're having a giveaway. We're having a giveaway that's going to run till May 1st. It is a giveaway where you are telling us a story. It's called the Unicorn of the Sea giveaway. Uh, it's about narwhals and unicorns, and you have to write us a story. And um, I hope that you will go over there and enjoy that. We've got some cool donations of some things to give away. And um, I'm going to sweeten the pot by putting a narwhal crocheted pattern in there. So uh, we've got a skein of yarn and I think we've got a um, needle minder or something. We've already got a couple of entries. So please, oh, a pattern, excuse me. A pattern's donated by Army Wife Knitting Life and Raven Divas donated a skein of yarn. So maybe I'll donate a second pattern, but it's going to be a narwhal. You don't get to pick it. You have to do a narwhal. <laughs> got you know. Narwhals, everything. Uh, but anyway, so go check that out. Um, and that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that stuff this week. I'm not going to talk about other people's make-alongs. I talk about those every time pretty much. So you can go back and check any of those out that you're interested in. So we're going to move on now and talk about finished objects. Okay, so I have a couple of things to show. I don't have as many finishes because I've been trying to catch up on some projects that I had let sit for a minute, but I do have a couple of quasi-finished objects and then some sewing-finished objects. And that's kind of on hold right now because my sewing machine has crapped out on me. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Willie, you're going to have to get down for a minute. Okay. 
All right, so my quasi finished objects is I'm, I'm sizing up my blocks for my blanket. So I'm going around the ones that are a little bit small because of the yarn gauge with double crochet. So I've done a couple of more of those. I've got the seashell and I don't think I had showed the blue whales last time I had done those. And then uh, the baby sharks or the sharks. I don't guess they're baby sharks, but they're sharks. Okay. So I'm getting close to having all the blocks that were a little bit on the small side up to the right size. And so pretty soon I'll be ready to start joining them. And that will be very exciting. <laughs> so got three of those done. And so I'm going to put those over here with my stack of other ones that I've got done. All right. Then um, I found a couple of bird nests that somehow I didn't get donated when we were doing the wildlife, uh, the Australian wildlife uh, make along. And so I got to looking around for some places where I could donate them. And I found a place up in North central arkansas that does rescue and i contacted her and asked her if she would like them and she said oh that'd be wonderful and then she said do you happen to sew and i'm like well yeah i do and she said um could you make possibly a couple of little pads that are two foot by four foot to put in the bottom of my bigger cages and i said sure i can do that so i had bought the bolt of fabric for the little growth charts that had probably 15 or 20 of them in there let's face it i don't know 15 or 20 people that are having babies so what i did was um i used the growth charts as my little blankets because they were the right size okay so all i did was i had I, I used them on both sides and then i put some batting low loft batting and these need to be washable in there and then i just stitched them down to kind of hold the batting in place to keep it from shifting so I made two of those, and as I was finishing up the quilting on the second one, my sewing machine started throwing a fit. And I thought, well, this is not good. And I don't even know, I don't even think I got, no, I didn't get completely finished with the quilting on it, because I didn't, I was gonna go up, I was doing uh, lines on this one, and I didn't get this all the way through the center. But anyway, so um, I thought these would be cute for the wildlife rescue, because they have little wild animals on it. But my sewing machine started throwing a fit. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I cleaned it. I didn't help. And then I could tell by the way it was acting that it was probably not to do with being dirty. And I thought, well, maybe the belt's slipping. So I took this panel off of it and the belt looked fine. And, and I did a, bit, a little bit of research and it, the motor's going bad. And then when I was watching it, you can see it sparking in a way that it probably shouldn't be doing. So I'm like, okay, the motor's going bad. Well, you know, I thought, okay, I'll, I can fix this, right? I can fix things. Uh, fix my washer, fix my dryer, you know. I had gotten ready to fix my weed eater, but I got help with that. We'll talk more about that later. But I thought, I can fix this. So I got to looking up prices of motors. A new motor for this machine is $150. Right? Well, with shipping, it's $150. I can buy this machine used on eBay for 90 <laughs> I can buy a new one, new machine of comparable ability because this, this machine's about 20 years old of comparable ability, which is all that I needed to do, uh, for $150. So I thought, okay, eventually I probably will fix this one when I have a spare $150 laying around, but that's not now. <laughs> so I ordered myself a new machine. Uh, so it should be here anytime and I'll finish the quilting on that and get those in the mail. So, yay, <laughs> my sewing machine. And of course, once my sewing machine breaks, I wanna sew all the time, right? You know, cause that's the way that works. Um, so anyway, so I got these, but I did get these two things done and that's all the finished objects that I have for this week. Um, I am working on uh, my sort of languish, I, I set my languishing works in progress on the table after my last podcast and that's what I, those are what I've been working on. So now we're gonna move on and talk about works in progress. Okay, so for works in progress, I do have some things to show for that. The first thing I will show will be my uh, Valentine Heart Doily. I have made a little bit of progress on that. Um, I need to take these out of here anyway because I'm finished with those. So these are in my, this is in my Tesla Knits Curvy Witches bag. I love Jasmine's bags and her, she's been making masks to donate just like a lot of other sewists have been. But also too, her, her bags normally donate to Right to Dream too which is an initiative that, that provides um, a safe um, shelter for the homeless population of Portland, Oregon. So I applaud her for helping them out. 
Um, this is the Valentine Heart Doily by Anne-Marie Wilkerson. And it looks like this. Okay, so my hearts are all going to be the same color combinations. I'm not alternating lights and darks. So all my hearts are done. I've got six hearts finished here. Okay, so I've made all my little hearts. And now I've started the edging on them. Okay, so the edging, you will join these. You, you do the edging and then you join them together um, at the end. So... Yeah, so I'm on to that part. I, I got that far late one night, and then I kind of quit working on it. So I sat down and finished the hearts and did the edging on one, and then I have that's really the only night that I have worked on that. And I am just using some um, uh, gifted, you know, my friend Dana at work, her mother used to crochet a lot, and her hands won't let her thread crochet, so this is all her mother's thread. So, um, okay, so I got that far. <laughs> that's going to be my next let's get it finished thing because I've been trying to focus on one thing at a time to get finished I get a whole bunch of stuff started and then I try to finish one thing at a time and sometimes I feel like I'm not getting anywhere okay so uh, my next work in progress is in my April 9 designs alpacas bag and it is my changes shawl and I am have made some good progress on that I spent about four days working on that. This is the Changes Shawl by Knitting Expat. Willie's plundering around over there. Okay, I am halfway through the first section C. So, let me find the front page of this pattern so I can show it to you here. Or not. It's not in order. And it's not even in here. So, I'll just show you this picture. So that's what it's gonna look like when it's done. You knit one side, you finish one side completely, then you go back and do the other side. So I've got the central pattern done and I'm working on uh, one side. I'm halfway through the section C. And um, let's see, when last I, let me try to make sure I don't draw up any stitches because my, the other day I did and I just about had a small panic attack. All right, so the last time I showed it to you, my little dude. Oh, I guess I didn't move him. The last time I showed it to you, I had just started this um, section C, which is this uh, wrapped section here. So um, you do, I guess I've got to do one more row of this pink and then I'll be done with that transition. And then I've got to do all the colors one more time and it'll be done. So, um, yeah, so I'm that far. And then I've got a section D. I'll pick up the stitches that are on hold here and knit section D. And then that end will be done. And then I get to go over here and do the same thing on this end. So, yay. All right. So, I got that much done. Let me put this up before Willie decides he wants to play with it. So I kind of quit knitting on it for a long time and then I've picked it back up. And like I said, I sat all these, these particular projects on my kitchen table so that when I'm sitting down in the evenings, um, I primarily sit at my kitchen table, which is really not the most comfortable place I could be sitting, but it's where I like to sit and work because that's where the light's really good. Um, so I've been, I sat this and my doily and the uh, couple of the cross stitches that I'm going to show you. And those, that's why I've been working, focusing on them right now. Okay, so speaking of, my other three works in progress that I will share with you this week are all stitching projects. Uh, the first one is I completed my uh, March block for the um, Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery Animal Almanac Stitch Along. And I have not yet started April because um, I've been working on a different one. But... So I completed Leap the Frog. You can see him there. Okay. This month's is a bunny and it's April showered theme. So uh, that'll be something I'll start probably this week. I've got a thing I need to finish that I'm going to hopefully finish today because it is, the weather here today is terrible. It is rainy and stormy and it is, I'm going to go outside and feed and that's going to be about the extent of what I get accomplished outside today. But I'll tell you about my other outside exploits. Oh, and this is also one of Charlotte's um, 
cross stitching bags uh, from April Nine Designs. This is one, one of her bags. Uh, in this bag from So Much to Love, I have my little Scottish bell pull from Isle of Sky Crafts, and I did put a little bit of time in on that. So it is where the picture went for it but anyway it is a little bell pull and i have gotten this far i've started on um putting in the second color and doing the outlining so um yeah made a little bit of progress on that and both those needle minders came from kim's needle minders willie what have you got you don't need that well i'm not gonna take away from him and then last but not least um I have made some good progress on one of the Magnolia pillowcases. I have completed the cross stitching. Oh, that's wrinkled up terrible. Okay, I've completed the cross stitching and I am just getting started on the back stitching. So I have done the back stitching on this side over here by my Fox needle minder, which is also from So Much to Love. But I've done, I've done those two leaves and that magnolia bud and the stem. So now I'm going to start working my way across the magnolia and over to here. So, and then I bought this at a thrift store. Uh, it was in with some other stuff. And so whoever had this before cut the pillowcase open. So I've got to fix that after I wash it. And I'll probably sew it first and then wash it. But then I'm going to line it, I think, because I don't like... The weight of this pillowcase with it not being lined so i'm gonna do that and then of course i have the other one to completely do so that's what it looks like when it's all done you gonna sit up there okay all right so those are my works in progress for this week so let's move on and talk about future crafting okay so my future crafting this week um these are both projects that I kind of got the idea. Well, one of them is a class that I was going to take that ended up being canceled and they let us just pick up our kit. So I'll show that first. I was going to take a basket making class at the park with Sasha. And with everything that's going on, the state park system decided to close down all classes at least through the end of May. So we were supposed to have a basket making class in March for Arkansas History Month. And it was going to be this one. It was going to be this holiday gift basket. And so we had the option of a refund or getting our kits. And I thought, well, I'll just get my kit. So that's what this is. <laughs> that's what this is. This is a pattern from Joanna's Collections online. And you can order the kit pre-cut if you want to. Um, now, with the kits that she ordered for the class, it was all natural read. But I actually have some dyed read that's the right size. So I think I'm going to go ahead and weave mine with the dyed reed uh, like it shows in the picture. Okay, so I got that. That should be a pretty quick make. I just need to sit down. That shouldn't take too terribly long to make that. Then after watching Vanessa's cool uh, napkins that she made on her podcast, I had bought this bolt of fabric when I went to Marshall Dry Goods for my birthday last year. That's also where I got the little, um, the little, um, growth charts but i bought this little cute farm fabric and i had no clue what i was going to make with it i just knew i thought it was really super cute so i thought hmm why not make yourself a set of napkins and a tablecloth out of this because it's a whole bowl i mean there's plenty of fabric to do whatever i want to so this is farm by french bull uh, which is a wyndham fabrics and um i just thought it was super cute little farm animals so yeah i'm gonna make some Eventually, when I get my sewing machine, I'm going to make some um, napkins and tablecloth out of that. Don't have a lot of future crafting because I want to finish up some stuff before I commit to starting too much more. So that's pretty much going to be it this time. So I just have a couple of acquisitions I want to share. So we'll move on to that. Okay, so um, in acquisitions, the first one I'm wearing, <laughs> the National Cowboy Hall of Fame and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City. I mentioned their Twitter account um, with their security guard who is doing the um, updates since they're closed down to, um, 
to the public right now. And so they they uh, did a shirt and it says hashtag the cowboy on it because that's how he was thinking he was using hashtags correctly and then his grandson corrected him. But it's been a really a sweet thing to read and watch. So they were doing a fundraiser for the museum. So I ordered one of their t-shirts. Um, but anyway, so then... Um, Utterly Adorable Knits, which is, they're in Iowa, close to my friend Nancy. They had a pre-order for a bag, and it was the Women Supreme Court Justices. Okay, and then she sent me a little note card with her pupper's paw prints on it, which I was, thought was really cute. So this is Utterly Adorable Knits on Etsy. Uh, she's also making masks right now. Silver Shed USA is making masks, and I think if you buy from her ready-to-ship ready to ship bags, she'll send you two masks if you request them in the notes. So if you don't have the ability to sew, that's a way for you to also get some masks. Because I know that a lot of the people that are making masks, man, they're selling them out as soon as they post them. Uh, and we'll talk more about this in science, but you never know from one day to the next what the directive is going to be on that. Uh, in other bag news, um, Charlotte from April 9 Designs had an update, and she just knows me. She just gets me, and I needed more project bags, like I needed a hole in the head, but I couldn't pass up these two cross-stitch bags, because this is the whimsies. Look at the witches. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and then she had this adorable spoon flower fabric one. And it's very springtime-y. You know, rabbit, rabbit, it's a new month. And then there's the rabbits for springtime. So, um, I love her bags. And she always sends you a sweet little um, keeper of some, you know, progress keeper or just a little zipper pull, whatever you want to use it for on those. So, um, yeah. So, Charlotte does a great job. I really highly recommend her. And I don't think I showed this last time. But... You know, sometimes the way I cope, and I shouldn't do this, is I look online at stuff, and that's probably not the most productive use of my dollars <laughs> and time. Uh, but I saw this kit. It's a cross-stitching kit. It's a Dimensions cross-stitching kit, and I love the birds. And I don't think I showed that. If I did, I apologize. But I just thought that was really sweet. So, just something my mom and I shared. So I, I wanted to share that. And there's another kit for Kitter Getter Done, right? This is why we do this, because that's my way I, I cope, is I, I buy kits, and then I need help making them. So, you know, I have a make-along. Can't win any prizes myself, but, you know, at least it motivates me to make stuff. So anyway, so that's all the crafty content. So if that's what you're here for, I hope you enjoyed it. I kind of sped through it this week. I don't know why. I guess I'm a little ball of energy this week. Um, but we're going to move on now talk a little bit about science. Well, um, there's not a lot to say about what's been going on on campus because the answer to that is nothing. <laughs> we are online instruction only through the end of the academic year. Um, it's been going okay. I mean, this is what bothers me. And I think I mentioned this last time. And if I didn't, I'm going to say it. And even if I did, I'm going to say it again. Um, you know, it's been one month since they closed us. On Wednesday... March of in March that Wednesday in March was the 11th or whatever it was um you know we were talking with my classes and I have a I have a rapport with my classes where I enjoy visiting with them and getting to know them I'm pretty invested in them at this point in the semester especially the ones where I've got students that I've had for more than one semester and I am um, we were talking and they said the word at that point was, oh, well, we'll probably just extend spring break. So I thought, okay, great. I'll see y'all Friday. And then they closed us and we never got to meet again. And that I realized why they had to do it. But I feel like I didn't get to say goodbye. I feel like we didn't get to adequately have that closure. And it's just not the same online with them. I mean, my upper division classes, it's a little bit better because I've known those students a little bit longer, and so we have a, a different kind of interaction. But my College Physics 2 class, I just feel like we're just trying to get done. And I, I was visiting with Vanessa a little bit about this, because I know she's kind of feeling the same way. The students are tired. 
We're all very anxious. We don't know what's happening. Um, and, you know, and I realize this situation is changing very fast. Um, that's one thing I was going to say is there is a lot of information being thrown around on the net and in the news. And the fact is, is you're like, well, well, they keep changing what they're saying. Well, that's because we just don't know yet. This is a new strain of this virus. We don't understand it yet. We don't have enough data on it yet to make broad generalizations. <coughs> the, um, my poor acid reflux is just in overdrive lately too. That's how my stress shows up is I'll be calm as a cucumber externally, but then my acid reflux starts flaring up really bad. It makes me cough, which we've talked about that before. <laughs> but um, we just don't know. I mean, and, and one of the things that that's, you know, it takes time to understand something fully. And people are, are like, why can't we do this in a hurry and blah, blah, blah. Because it takes time. Because something works in a Petri dish in a lab doesn't mean that it's going to work in a human being. I mean, that's just the way that is. Also, just because it works in a human being doesn't mean you want to use it as a treatment because it could ultimately cause more harm than good. That's why there's clinical trials and testing and all of this stuff. It takes time for drugs to be developed. You know, you know, there, there's a lot of examples of this conversation happening. You know, there's this conversation happening about the hydroquinone quinone, I'm probably saying that wrong, but the, the anti-malarial drug. And I've been re-watching the series MASH, and one of the things that came out in that, in that show was they were actually talking about, in an episode about how the anti-malarial, certain classifications of them, um, are very bad for people of African American descent, or African descent, and some Middle Eastern groups. Um, and they, you know, so in that case, it caused them to be terribly sick and it, they can't use it. Um, it can also cause cardiotoxicity. So while it may look like a promising treatment, I mean, you could pour acid on the thing and kill it too, but that doesn't mean that's something you want to take internally. So these things take time. Um, you know, there's a, and there's a lot of information going around about masks, no masks, whatever. I think you just have to go with what the, I look at the WHO and the CDC and, and that's where I go. I don't look at any news outlets. I don't look at any, you know, daily briefings. I don't do any of that. I go to the CDC website. I go to the WHO and that's where I get my information and the Arkansas Department of Health, which links directly to the CDC. That's all I need. I need science. I don't need spin. I don't need talking heads on TV. I don't need the 24-hour news cycle. I need science. And that's what I'm going to tr put my trust in. Um, you know, there are things that alleviate, that make the symptoms less severe, but they don't kill the virus. So things, things like Z-Packs and stuff may make you feel a little bit better, but they don't kill the virus. Um... And at some point, you just have to step back and go, I'm going to, I'm not going to look at anything about this for a while, you know, because your mental health will just suffer if you just constantly are bombarding yourself with it. Um, and so I've had to really just kind of step back from it. Like I said, I'll look at the Arkansas Department of Health maybe every three days or every couple of days just to see what the current um, directives are, you know, because I do still have my horses at Mary Ann's and stuff. But I'm looking at the science, y'all. I'm not, I'm not looking for, you know, I, and the fact is, is the science is still evolving. We just don't know yet. And we, and, and, and any legitimate scientist will tell you that. So this idea that hydrochloroquinone or um, Z-Packs or ivermectin horse warmer is one that I've seen going around. And I'm like, oh my God, please, people do not go down to the feed store and buy a tube of warmer and take it because it'll make you at least extremely ill and you will need all that toilet paper or it could make you go blind. <laughs> so don't do that. Yes, it has some promise in a clinical test or in a test in a lab, but but that's in a lab and how things act in a lab act very differently than they do in living tissue. So please just 
be safe, take good, you know, be sensible, be safe, and let's wait to see what happens. Don't rush off half-cocked on every news story that you see. Um, the other thing is, is learn to use some discernment. I mean, I ask for sources when people post these claims. Ask for, for legitimate vetted sources. You know, we've talked a little bit about science literacy before. Sometimes I just have to walk away from it. <laughs> I don't know how y'all are, and I just have to walk away from it. But let's put that away, and let's talk about something else, okay? Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about, um, I had a question about, because I just got a new mini horse this last week, and we'll talk about him in the farming segment. Somebody said, what is the difference between a pony and a mini horse? And there is a difference. And so I actually did a little bit of research for you. And uh, this is from the Horse Illustrated website, which is a magazine that I used to subscribe to as a kid or used to buy off the newsstand as a kid. And this is sort of the broad strokes of how to um, distinguish the two. So in the horse industry is the standard, okay? So a pony is a very is a small horse. Um, and the, de the definition of Mer Merriam-Webster is a small horse, especially one of any of several horse breeds of very small stocky animals noted for their gentleness and endurance. And I have to laugh about gentleness because ponies are very gentle, but some of them can be the dickens to ride. <laughs> okay, so um, in the horse industry, ponies are distinguished from full-size horses based on size and stature. Ponies are generally under 14 two hands, okay? So a hand is four inches. So 14 times four is 60 no, it's 56. It's 56 plus two means two inches. So 58 inches. Okay. Is that right? Four times four, 16, carry one. Yeah, 56 plus two. Yeah, 58 inches. Okay. And that's at the wither. All right. So that is 60 inches is, is five feet. So 58 inches is four foot eight at the shoulder or at the wither. Okay, ponies are generally stockier than horses. They're thicker boned. Uh, they are proportioned differently. They generally have shorter legs. They're generally thicker through what's called their barrel or their midsection. And they have a thicker neck. Um, a lot of times ponies were used as draft animals to pull carts and things like that. So they have that stronger, thicker body for pulling. Um, now, some were bred to be more refined, like the Hackney Pony, which was a fine harness pony in a lot of cases. A lot of modern Shetlands and Welshes, like the Welsh Cobb, are bred to be more refined. Uh, but generally, the proportions are not horse-like, okay? Uh, there's a lot of different breeds of ponies, including the Shetland and the Hackney. There's also the Fell and the Exmoor and the Dartmoor and uh, Pony of the Americas, and there's a lot of different breeds of ponies, specifically ponies. Um, in horse showing, the standard is usually just anything under 14 two. So, it doesn't matter. It may be a very short horse, but it's a, they're considered a pony because Gusty is almost a pony. Now, miniature horses are bred to be generally more refined. Now, there are different classifications of mini miniature horses. There's uh, different height measurements. There's also the dwarf, many miniature horses that exhibit traits of dwarfism, um, where they are proportioned differently than the, than the other miniature horses. Uh, miniatures are generally between 34 inches and 38 inches, because in their breed standard book, they are measured in inches, um, which would be, uh, if you divided that 36 by, or 30, well, 36 by four would be nine hands. So nine two is what it would you know if you want to do it in hands. Um, they're resembled to be refined like horses. They generally don't have the thicker, stockier legs and stockier necks. Their proportions are more like a full size horse generally, but they still do have tend to have at least mine do very thick manes and tails. Um, they tend to have refined necks, the long, flexible neck, the straighter legs, the shorter coupling in the back. Um, now, they've both been used as uh, draft animals. Um, according to the article, the earliest appearance of the miniature horse was at the Palace of Versailles for King Louis XIV in uh, 1650. And he kept 
um, in his menagerie, he had some tiny horses. So that was probably miniature horses. Uh, they were originally brought to the United States to be coal mine ponies because they could fit in the, um, fit in the smaller tunnels and smaller than the actual pony size ponies could. Uh, there is a breed stand. The ideal standard of the, the original book was the Falabella, which was a South American breeding uh, line. Now, ponies tend to be stockier and hardier. They usually live in, like, the Shetland ponies. If you think about the Shetland Isles, those tend to be more rugged terrain-wise and climate-wise. A lot of ponies are built to be durable little cre creatures. Um, you know, tough feet, um, stockier, so against the diverse weather or against harsher weather. Um the first appearance of domesticated stock in the United States was in the early 1800s, again, for coal mines and agricultural work. But they have been in the wild in the U.S. since the 1600s on the Assateague Island, which the Assateague ponies, if you read Misty of the Chincoteague, the Assateague ponies were very probably descendants of Spanish conquistador horses from a shipwreck that swam to the island, and they've lived there on a preserve ever since. Um... You can do lots of different things with both breeds. You can ride both breeds, although with minis, it's usually for small kids. Um, you can, they can both pull, you know, carts and harness. Um, you know, they can do obstacle courses. Some people keep them just as pets. I mean, that's pretty much what mine are, although they need jobs. We've decided we need Camp Mini to give them a job. So, uh, but anyway, so I just thought it was an interesting uh, conversation to talk about the difference between miniature horses and ponies, because there is a difference. There is a difference. And you know it when you see it. I mean, it's kind of hard to explain other than that, but you just know it when you see it. So, um, I'm bored Willie to sleep here. So, now we're going to move on and talk about farm life. Well, farm life's been pretty hopping since I've been able to be home uh, for the last month. Uh, you know, obviously I'm still working, but I don't have the two-hour commute and I can go in between classes and feed or do a load of laundry or whatever I need to do. So farm life has been kind of, you know, taking up a lot of my time and that's why I don't have as many finished objects because I've been, it's springtime and it's time to do things outside and get the garden ready and all of that. So, um, since last we talked, Jacob came and helped me another day. We finished the chicken coop, um, the, the, the coop out, and I have busted the turkey up off of her nest because she had been sitting for way longer than she needed to be to hatch any eggs. The eggs were rotten and bad. So, um, I caught her and put her in the newly finished chicken coop to convince her she didn't need to sit on them anymore. If they start sitting too late in the year, you can have problems with flies and I lost one of my female turkeys to that before, and I don't want to take the chance with her. So she is no longer sitting on eggs, and unfortunately, we didn't get any baby turkeys. The baby chicks are doing very well, though. They're growing quite well. Um, we've got a cold snap, the post-Easter. I don't know. If, well, I made the joke that maybe it's Orthodox Easter cold snap this year because today's Easter Sunday, but the next weekend is Orthodox Easter, and we're supposed to have a freeze Tuesday night. <laughs> You know, our average last frost date here is the 15th of April. Um, you know, it's been very warm. It's been balmy, but we have a cold front, front coming through, which is why we have the cold, the stormy weather today. Um, and it's going to be in the mid to low 30s, like several nights. But once that passes, I think we're done. And um, so... Yeah, <laughs> it'd be, be nice to have that done. But we've got, the chicks are doing good outside. And once that cold is, is by and these storms are by, I'm going to move them into that newly finished coop, I think. Um, and that way they can get out of there. I've got them in a transition pen right now. So we moved all the new rabbit hutches that I got from my friend Shelly into place. And I moved some rabbits around, which was good. Um, I guess the big project has been the garden. I spent all day on a Sunday construct, going through my scrap pile of cedar and I constructed eight raised bed frames, um, six four by fours, a three by three and a two and a half by three because that was what I had in the scraps. 
And then uh, when Jacob had come to help me, I we went up to get some fence posts and I had some fence posts that were cut out of telephone poles, which are incredibly heavy. And some of them were probably 12 inches in diameter. So they were huge. Um, the person that got them for me, I guess they thought I was fencing velociraptors in. I don't know, but they're too big to use as fence posts really for what I need. So, um, I decided I was going to make raised beds out of some of those. So I did an experiment. I brought four down here and I positioned them and, and stabilized them. And then I filled them with compost and soil. Um, and I think they're going to make a pretty good raised bed. So I've got some more poles. I'm going to take my tractor back up there and pick up four more and make another raised bed. It makes about a five and a half by five and a half raised bed when I do that. Um, one of them I'm going to use for my strawberries and one of them I'm going to plant corn and squash in. Um, so I, I built all the raised beds. Then I've spent the last week with a shovel and a wheelbarrow using the compost pile and cleaning out from underneath the rabbit cage, excuse me, and trucking, bear, and trucking you know, loads and wheelbarrow loads of uh, compost down to the beds. Each of the smaller beds, the four by fours, each took two and a half wheelbarrows full, and that's one of those big double wheeled wheelbarrows. Um, and then the smaller ones took two-ish. That big one took 10. <laughs> So I've definitely got my workout in, you know, the last few days. I also fixed my wheelbarrow. One of the bolts had come out of it. And so I I repaired the brace and, and the wheelbarrow is working much better now. So that's also good. Uh, I've got plants ready to go out. I'm just waiting on the weather to, to fare up so I can put them out. Um, I've been doing some bartering with people. Um, you know, I dug up a whole bunch of elderberry plants out in the ditch that were they were growing as volunteers and have traded them with people. I was mentioning that the last time I recorded. Uh, so I've done more of that, but I've also traded um, some other plants and some eggs and some beef. Um, I got my little push weed eater fixed. My neighbor's uh, son who helps me with my cattle came over and fixed it, which is, that is a critical piece of equipment out here because that's what I use to mow the backyard where the dogs are. I mowed around the beehives, got that done. Um, but I've got all the raised beds ready, although I'm going to build some more because I uh, reconnected with a friend of mine from high school. Her dad was one of my college physics professors, and he passed away uh, recently, and he had a wood shop. He was a woodworker, and I probably mentioned him a couple of times when I was talking about bargains galore on 64. Well, um, his oldest daughter and I were friends because we were in band together, and we both played clarinet. And we've reconnected and we have a lot to talk about and visit about. And luckily we have a similar worldview, which is always nice to find someone. And she said, do you need some wood? So I went down there yesterday and picked up some more wood to make some more raised beds. And I went back through my scrap pile and pulled out anything that I thought would work. So I'm going to try to make at least three more four by four raised beds, if not more than that, depending on how much I can get out of what I've got in my truck. And I traded with her, gave her some beef. So it's been it's been enjoyable to trade with people. You know, I have an easier time trading than I do putting a price on something. So um, my friend Kathy brought me a huge sage plant. Um, and I traded with her on, I gave her a dozen eggs <laughs> for it. So uh, a sage plant, some lemon thyme actually. And then I'm going to trade some cages that I don't use anymore and hopefully get some baby pear trees, and a white lilac bush, which would be really nice. Um, yeah, so I've been doing that. I've been doing some other projects, like drying a lot of things, and, and I've made some violet jelly, which was really nice. Um, you know, things are blooming and growing like crazy here, which has been really wonderful to watch, you know, the earth come back to life, which has been great. Um, as I mentioned, I fixed the dryer and the washer, put a new dispenser motor in the washer now it's working great uh, i was going to try to fix my sewing machine but sometimes it's more cost effective to buy something new in the case of the washer and the dryer i spent less than a hundred dollars to fix both of them in about two hours of my time the dispenser motor was like 15 minutes um so you know i felt like well if i can get at least another year's worth of work out of them that you know a new washer and dryer pair is like seventeen hundred dollars <laughs> i'm like whoa that's expensive um I've been doing some preserving, like I said. Grandma Rose's homestead had a 
uh, episode where she canned milk. And I was like, hmm, that's an interesting idea. So I tried, I did, I did some of that. I, I did an experiment with that. Um, you know, as I said, I've been um, working outside a lot. And then our new pony, uh, his name is Loki because of his attitude and his, he likes to stir the pot. Uh, I picked him up last Tuesday. He is another miniature gelding. He's a paint or pinto miniature gelding. And he is settling in with everyone else, which is re really very nice. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what's been going on there with all the critters and, um, had a great ride on flame. Um, had a lesson with Denise. The show is canceled in April as I expected. Um, but had a great ride on flame and we're starting to get kind of a confidence building back. She was very anxious after that show. And I think it's because of the general unrest in the universe. You know, everybody's kind of anxious and worried right now. And I think she was feeling that. So, uh, we kind of worked through some relaxation exercises for her and getting her listening, and she did really good. Um, you know, my apple trees are blooming like crazy. My quince have bloomed. Um, my irises are starting to bloom, and I've got nectarines all over this tree out here, and it's going to freeze Tuesday night. So, I'm going to be out there with a sheet, probably <laughs> trying to cover that tree up. But other than that, everybody's kind of coming along. Uh, really well. It's just been, it's been, um, you know, I've enjoyed being able to be here and work. It's been, it's been nice. I mean, the circumstances are dreadful and terrible, but um, I'm trying to make the best of it. I mean, that's all any of us can do. You know, I've tr I'm trying to make the best of it. So, hope you're doing okay too. So, uh, anyway, so we're going to move on now and talk about a few final thoughts. Okay, well, I hope you guys are doing okay. I know this is, these are uncertain times that we're in. And I know that if you have anxiety issues already, this is a challenging time. Um, so I, I hope that you are finding something that gives you peace and joy. I've been really moved by the worldwide effort to be alone together. You know, for example, and I talked about this last time, all the people, you know, all the museums and the zoos and the aquariums trying to make sure we stay connected. The Cowboy Hall of Fame, the Georgia Aquarium, the Cincinnati Zoo. Um, I took advantage of the Shows Must Go On uh, initiative that Andrew Lloyd Webber is doing where he is broadcasting his musicals for 48 hours starting on Friday uh, it's at like 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. British summertime. So that's about 1 o'clock here in the afternoon. And they're available for 48 hours. And probably my very favorite musical ever is Jesus Christ Superstar. And it seems appropriate with it being Easter weekend to watch that. And uh, I watched the, the version that they aired was the 2012-13 Arena Tour. Uh, and it had Tim Minchin as Judas. And I... Y'all can fight me. I, I've listened to the original. I've got the, I've seen the the telecast of it. I've got the soundtracks and yes, they're great. But I loved this one so much because of its modern take. It was very moving to me to see the current context of the things that they had in that. And plus I like Tim mentioned. So um, it was very moving. I mean, I... I watched it last night and I ended up buying it on iTunes because I want to watch it again and again and again and again. Um, you know, there has been this outpouring of goodness with the stitching community and the fiber community with free patterns. And, you know, every Ravelry group has a support thread. And I, you know, I've done that also, you know, even though we're small in number, I still care about all y'all. And, um, you know, I've tried to reach out to people um, you know, and I know we don't have to be productive during this time, but that is my stress. My, that's why I cope is by being productive. So that doesn't work for everybody. And I don't think it should have to work for everybody, but that's the way I cope is I stay busy. Um, so I hope you're okay. I hope that you're okay. And you know, all of y'all that watch me, I feel like we're friends. Y'all are my people. You're my guys or gals or however you want to say it. You're my peeps. So, if you need someone to talk to, message me, 
get on my Zoom group. Now, right now, I do have a password on my Zoom group because of my classes. Um, but if you want to get on there, just message me and I'll tell you what it is. Um, and that'll probably go away once my classes are over. But I'm just doing that as a security message, me security measure for my classes. But one of the things that I have really very much enjoyed, or two of the things, Patrick Stewart reading the Shakespearean sonnets, so the sonnet a day, which has been wonderful. But also Bill Moyers has done a poet a day. So what he's done is Bill Moyers on his website has the poet a day uh, initiative where um, he and his colleagues have tried to introduce us to some of the poets they've met over the years. And one of my uh, favorite poets who is also the U.S. Poet Laureate is Joy Harjo. And she is in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where she's living currently. And um, on his website is a recording of her reading this poem. And I'm sure she will do it much better than I will. Uh, but I thought that this was, she p chose this one saying that she hopes it will help others during this time of isolation. She says it is a time to remember who we are and the best poems do that. So this is for calling the spirit back from wandering the earth on its human feet. Put down that bag of potato chips, that white bread, that bottle of pop. Turn off that cell phone, computer, and remote control. Open the door, then close it behind you. Take a breath offered by friendly winds. They travel the earth gathering essences of plants to clean. Give back with gratitude. If you will sing, it will give your spirit lift to fly to the stars, ears, and back. Acknowledge this earth who has cared for you since you were a dream, planning itself precisely within your parents' desires. Let your moccasin feet take you to the encampment of the guardians who have known you before time, who will be there after time. They sit before the fire that has been there without time. Let the earth stabilize your post-colonial insecure jitters. Be respectful of the small insects, birds, and animal people who accompany you. Ask their forgiveness for the harm we humans have brought down upon them. Don't worry. Heart, you, the, the heart knows the way, though there may be high rises, interstates, checkpoints, armed soldiers, massacres, wars, and those who will despise you because they despise themselves. The journey might take you a few hours, a day, a year, a few years, a hundred, a thousand, or even more. Watch your mind. Without training, it might run away and leave your heart for the immense human feast set by the thieves of time. Do not hold regrets. When you find your way to the circle, to the fire kept burning by the keepers of their soul, your soul, you will be welcomed. You must clean yourself with cedar and sage or other healing plant. Cut the ties you have to failure and shame. Let go the pain you are holding in your mind, your shoulders, your heart, all the way to your feet. Let go the pain of your ancestors to make way for those who are heading in our direction. Ask forgiveness. Call upon the help of those who love you. These helpers take many forms. Animal, element, bird, angel, saint, stone, or ancestor. Call yourself back. You will find yourself caught in corners and creases of shame, judgment, and human abuse. You must call in a way that your spirit will want to return. Speak to it as you would a beloved child. Welcome your spirit back from its wandering. It will return in pieces and tatters. Gather them together. They will be happy to be found after being lost for so long. Your spirit will need to sleep a while after it is bathed and given clean clothes. Now you can have a party. Invite everyone you know who loves and supports you. Keep room for those who have no place else to go. 
make a giveaway and remember, keep the speeches short, then you must do this. Help the next person find their way through the dark. So, I hope that you're doing well. We're all on this journey together. We're all trying to find our way through the dark, but we're together. We're together apart, but we're together. So, until I see y'all again, now more than ever, y'all be good to each other and take care of each other. And what, Willie? Huh? Are you sleepy? I know, it stormed all night. And until we see y'all again, peace out, y'all. Bye.